Hey everyone, good morning. Lee Lowell here from SmartOptionsSeller.com. Today is Saturday, May 14th, 2022. Welcome to another edition of our Saturday Synopsis. What do we do here? We look at charts. I show you what I'm seeing in the market and, and show you what I'm using to help me get into and out of trades for our newsletters. Chart reading, technical analysis is what I've been doing for the last 30 years. So I try to make these free videos to try to show you what I'm seeing in the market and try to help you up your game a little bit with your technical analysis if that's what you like to do. So sit back, give me a few minutes here, and let me show you what's been happening in the markets this week. Here we go. We always open up to the SPY, the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500. I like to use the S&P 500 as the broadest measure of the overall market. Gives us a good handle on what's been happening. Now, yes, individual stocks will trade differently at times than the general market itself. But most of the time, individual stocks will follow the general market. Because most of the time, there's not a lot of breaking news on individual companies outside of their own uh, quarterly uh uh, quarterly reports every three months or so. That's where they're called uh, earnings reports every three months. So outside of that, yeah, they may have news here and there about a new product, whatever. But most of the time, there's not breaking news about an individual stock or company. So they'll tend to follow the general market. That's why we like to look at the indexes, follow the indexes for the most part to give us what the general mood is of the market. So where do we leave off? So last Friday, last Saturday, when I made the video, uh, we always do about a week's worth of, of looking at charts. So last, last Friday, we were right around here or so. And I had, if we go back to that day, let me make sure that this is Friday. This bar right here was last Friday. Okay. So typically, and on the charts here, these are daily bar charts. I look at the daily charts and each vertical line is one day's worth of trading and the top of the bar is the high of the day and the low of the bar the bottom of the bar is the low of the day okay so here we were last friday at the end of trading last friday and they said you know the market's been looking weak every rally seems to get sold the moving averages 20 day moving averages is moving lower the 50 days turning lower and the 200 days flatlining here so i said it probably looked like more selling unfortunately and that we really tried to, we, we need to have that one day capitulation washout to find a bottom. That is when everybody sells on the same day, the market gaps open, the market goes lower, everyone gives up, throw their hands up. We have this huge, huge, long one day bar, volume spikes for the day, everyone panics, and then that's exactly where the mark, the bottom shows up, okay? So what happened this week as we move forward, we can see we had some more selling did come in, broke new lows, lower than here, lower than here. So we made new lows. Now, we had a nice bounce back. Uh, Thursday it started. Thursday we had a pretty decent day down, and then we started to rally back. And then Friday, which was yesterday, uh, Friday the 13th, here's the bar right here. We had a nice rally back. Now, is this the, the end of the bear market? Is this where the bull starts to come back for good? Hard to say. I'm a little skeptical yet, only because all the rallies have been sold off. Now, I will admit we've had a pretty good, pretty good selling come in since the beginning of April or the end of March. Just this long month and a half worth of selling right here. That's that's gotten everybody down. Everybody's feeling blue and not happy. They don't want to open up their uh, portfolio statements because we know what we're going to see, just not doing well. So this has been a pretty long, exhaustive, sometimes ferocious and aggressive selling move over the last six weeks or so. It's hard to take. So we, we got to reach a bottom at some point. There's there's going to be value. Stocks have come off so far that they're, they reach a value point where at some point the smart money, the big money, which is institutions, hedge funds, mutual funds, endowment funds, banks, they the, they're basically the ones that really control the market. And when they see value, they're going to step up and start to buy. But have we seen the ultimate bottom yet? Or this, or is this just a, you know, uh, a bear market bounce where we'll get these relief bounces, but then it gets sold off again. So I'm not convinced that we're, we're out of the woods yet. This was a nice relief rally, it's called. We may even get a little bit more 
of a bounce, um, you know, Monday, Tuesday next week, we may come up to hit the downtrending 20 day moving average here. This blue line is the 20 day moving average. So we may get the relief rally, suck everybody back in, and then it gets sold off again. So not sure that's the case, but, but, but the way the market's been going, the rallies have been sold off. See, we get a rally here, sells off, rally here, sells off, a little bit of rally here. We may have some more room to run up, maybe catch up to the 20 days I just said, and sell off again. Not sure yet, have to watch and wait. Let's see if there's what the volume looked like. Um, let me add the volume in here to see if there was any kind of spike in volume. See, what you wanna see on like a big move down is a real big spike in volume, more than your typical average range. Like here was a pretty good, these two bars right here were, were spikes in volume. And let's see, typically on a spike in volume, you'll get a down move in the market. So this spike in volume coincided with this day and this spike in volume coincided with this down move. So we haven't really seen, um, you can actually see the volume has been tapering off this past week or so, almost two weeks worth of trading, the volume has been coming off. So there's a couple ways to look at it. You can see it as the, the, vol the selling may be drying up on the downside. There's less volume. So the volume of selling may be drying up or we just haven't seen that one day capitulation yet. Let me see if I could, I think um, I can show you what that looks like. Um, so here, here was, this is a chart of Costco, Costco, and, and I like to use this as an example. Back on, let me see what the date was here. Here on, here's the, the price. This was on, let me look at my date here, March 5th, 2021. Costco was making a low here. The RSI got very oversold and we had the spike in volume right here. So this was, you know, a telltale signal that we're, we're hitting a bottom in this stock, which is Costco. Got a, a sp spike down in the price. RSI went totally oversold and, and a spike in volume. And look what Costco's done since. It's just rallied up. All right, so we go back to the SPY. So we haven't seen the RSI um, hit oversold levels. You know, this one here where we had the volume spike, the RSI got almost down to my oversold levels and then the market rallied, right? So we can see here on um, this spike down and then the market rallied off of the R low RSI and the volume spike, but then it got sold off again. So we haven't seen that, we haven't seen that capitulation yet that really signifies bottom. So it doesn't mean we haven't found a bottom, not saying that we had to have a capitulation to find a bottom. This could be the bottom. I mean, we've really sold off pretty good compared to where we are now. Um, this is where we were back in March of 2021. So we've lost about, you know, 14 months of gains in just a very short period of time. You, you know, you do your look back, here's where we were yesterday. You scale back or you scroll back and this was on March 24th, 2021. Okay, so about 14 months worth of gains just evaporated in a very short period of time. So there is value out there. There is value out there. The smart money needs to come in. The other thing we like to look at to see if we're getting into lows is that we like to, to look at um, the fear and greed index, which is a indicator that really tells you the mood of the, the retail market, you know, participants, the small traders like ourselves. And when everyone's panicking and selling, the fear and greed index gets very, very cheap. Let me let me pull that up here. I, I showed this in my newsletter the other day or yesterday. Um, bring this up on the screen. So here's the fear and greed index. This is the part of the email that I sent out to <clears throat> our newsletter readers. This is the CNN Money Fear and Greed Index, and it has this scale. Everyone, extreme fear. Okay, it's at a six level. It goes zero to 100. Okay, when, when you're at extreme fear, that means everyone's just getting out. And that's the exact time that we look for a bottom. It's basically a contrarian indicator, which goes against what everyone else is feeling. When everyone's bearish, how much further can the market go down? And that's when we get the bounce and start to spike up. So the fear and greed index at six telling us the market is super oversold, 
super oversold. And look what happened. Got this nice bounce uh, part of Thursday and yesterday, Friday. And like I said, it doesn't necessarily mean now the bull is going to take over and we're going to get to all-time new highs. It just means we needed some kind of relief rally. The market was just way oversold. And we can look at the VIX as well. The VIX is the fear indicator. Tells us the mood in the market as well. Um, the VIX has been going up. Just It goes opposite of the general market. So the VIX has been going up. But the last two days, you can see it started trending down as the market started to go up. So if the VIX itself could start to keep going down, the market keeps going up, we know we've hit some kind of at least temporary bottom. All right. So back to the SPY. We want to see maybe a continuation of this market next week, maybe all the way up to the downtrending 20-day moving average. That would take us to maybe about 415 on the SPY. Will it get that far? It's possible. We have the momentum The momentum from Thursday and Friday could carry over to Monday and Tuesday. We'll see how far it can take us. And then if it does get up to the 20-day moving average around 415 or so, be wary at that point. You may get the sell-off again. Or if it can power higher, then you know maybe we're, we're, we really found the bottom here. What we can do is we can draw some trend lines here. I mean, this is a pretty steep, this is a pretty steep sell-off right here. I mean, you can see that's uh, pretty steep. The steeper the sell-off, the harder it's going to bounce. So maybe we bounce up. The, the trend line is almost matching to where the 20-day moving average is. So maybe we bounce up to here, you know, to connect with the downtrending upper line here. So maybe around 4.15 or so. If it could break above that and start to move up, then I'm feeling a little bit better. But for now, I'm going to be a little wary. If it rallies up to the line here, I may look to you know, if I have any, if I want to get short, maybe buy some put options or something or sell some call spreads or something, I may try to do that. But I want to see what happens when it connects up here, if it gets knocked back down, or maybe it'll go through. Just don't know yet. Let's look at the, the triple Qs because that follows the NASDAQ to technology stocks. That's been getting hit pretty hard too. Let me remove these old lines here. And it, just like the SPY, you know, you can draw these pretty deep, this is a pretty, pretty deep, pretty strong down move. You know, the lines don't have to be exact. Just kind of gives you a visual of what's been happening. This is pretty steep. So we, you can see here Thursday and Friday had the, the bounce back. And it could probably rally up to maybe, I don't know, 315 or so. And then see what it, what, what it does when it comes up to this area. Will it get knocked back down and stay within the channel? Can't say yet. All right, so those are the indexes. Um, you know, eventually the market will come back and start to go up again. We we just we have these news items out there that that is taking precedence. It's 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 affecting the mood of the market. We've got the war in Ukraine. We've got inflation is still running very high. Interest rates are going to are rising. The U.S. Federal Reserve is raising interest rates to to help cure this inflation. COVID's still hanging around. China's in lockdown because of COVID, so that's really affecting the supply chains of many companies that get their their materials and supplies out of China. Workers can't work, so that's just causing more problems. Earnings, uh, you know, Q1 earnings are almost over. At least all the biggies have announced. Some are good, some are not so good. But a lot of the themes are we're having trouble with our supply chains, getting the material to make our products. And that will that will end eventually. You know, China will get over COVID. The supply chains will open up again. Um, interest rates are going to go up. So inflation will start to come down. People won't be spending as much money on food and gas and all that. I mean, this will all work itself out. It's just we've got all these news items, big news items happening all at the same time. So that's keeping the market on edge. And once those we kind of get through those storylines, then the market will start to go up because there's value down here. I mean, stocks have really come off pretty good. You know, let's take a look at some stocks and see, you know, how, just how far they've come off. Let's start with Apple. You know, Apple, you, you look at these these violent moves. You know, when I when I open the chart up a little bit, you can see how strong the selling has been. When I close it up like this, and you're like, oh, it doesn't look that bad, right? So it's all sort of in the perception. When I open it up, you know, then it looks a lot scarier. 
it went from about $180 all the way down to $140. $40 boo is pretty big, pretty big move for Apple. I mean, it, it's con- kind of coming down to this, you know, waterfall, big selling vertical move down. RSI is not completely oversold, but you know, Apple's given up a decent amount of of money. Forty dollars a share is a big move for Apple. Now we can sort of see this right around the one forty level. We've got this support area, right? So that seems to be an area to target. You know, if you're if you're if you're itching to get long on some shares of Apple, the one forty level has some good support going all the way back to last June or so. So there's going to be buyers here. There's going to be buyers stepping in around 140 to defend that level. And that's exactly where you can see it just came right down to just below 140 uh, on Thursday this week. and But it bounced like along with the rest of the market. So we'll see what happens. Uh, AMD, sort of the same thing. We had this 100 level, which was a support area I'd been buying around uh, in the low 100s as well, fell through it. These 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 horizontal lines I've dr- drawn the last couple of weeks to show the next areas of support. I said the 85 to 90 level should be the next area of support, which is right here around 85. Because if you scroll scroll back, here was the last support area, and it had bounced right around 85 dollars or so this week. Bounced up pretty good. Closed at 95. We got into a trade this week on AMD. Um, we sold, uh, in our credit spread, put option, credit spread newsletter. We sold some put spreads with some cushion down below, giving ourselves some cushion, hoping to see AMD rally back up. I like AMD for the long run. It's a chip stock, computer chips, computers aren't going away. AMD is not going away. There's some value down here. So we want to see that rally back up. Let's look at Tesla. Tesla had a big move this week as well. Okay, topped out around $1,150 beginning of April, went just below $700 on Thursday, rallied back, had the bounce with the rest of the market. Um, could we see 700, the 700 level, sort of a support area? There was a lot, if you go back to last June, you can see around $700, there was a decent amount, a decent amount of activity. A, you know, at first it couldn't get through 700 here, popped through it, came back down, and then finally got above. So $700 seems to be a level that um, has lots of buyers and sellers. And it looks like right now it's the support area. Bounced here, bounced here, broke through it last summer here in August. So $700 seems to be the magic number for now as far as potential support. So we'd like to see everything start to bounce. Amazon, just been crushed of late. Um, Almost hit the $2,000 mark, right? Let's go back to see when Amazon was near $2,000 a share. Um, Stay with me, let me move myself a little bit here. We'll look at the monthly chart. So Amazon last time was at 2,000, was right around here. And I'll tell you the date was um, April of 2020, just like right after the COVID low. So Amazon's, you know, gone up and then just in a few short months has given back two years worth of gains in a very short period of time. Okay. So Amazon has gotten oversold pretty close to oversold levels. Let's see what the volume looks like on Amazon. See if we got any kind of spike there. Okay. So here's a spike. Let's take a look at the spike. So here's the volume spike which was right after the earnings announcement, right? You can see the, the gap here, the air pocket volume site, but, the, but Amazon kept going lower, kept going lower for another, you know, $500 a share. RSI is getting oversold right around Wednesday this week. So um, Amazon might be putting in the low for a period of time. You get the, got the bounce. Uh, maybe it'll tick back up to twenty six hundred dollars or so. That's where the downtrending twenty day moving average is. So you, you, if we get a couple more days of up move, Amazon's going to jump pretty good. It may, it could even jump all the way up to twenty six hundred dollars. But damage has been done. So that's Amazon. Um, what other big stocks we like to look at? 
So we go through some of the really expensive stocks that got hit pretty good. We could talk about Shopify, uh, you know, $1,700 all the way down, got down under $400 this week, even down to, let's see what the low was here this week. This bar was the low $308. So that's a big move on Shopify. A lot of these tech stocks have just gotten hit this week. <clears throat> um, you know, I went through them all recently. Just if you're in these tech stocks, these Momo stocks, they've all been they've all gotten hit pretty hard. But let's look at some stocks that have been doing well. Let's we're not want to, I don't want to be all doom and gloom here. Coca-Cola, still a strong stock, a stalwart dividend aristocrat moving up looks a lot different than the other stocks we're looking at where they're all going down coca-cola looking good had a nice day on friday you know if you're looking for the stalwarts to, to hold and have forever and ever you know coca-cola is one of those types of stocks good dividend payer pepsi pepsi and coke right pepsi looking pretty good too it's got the nice uptrending chart not the downtrending chart and you know these strong stocks you can buy in the pullbacks on the you know the 50 day or 20 day moving average levels yes it got hit with the rest of the market back in february and march but it 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 still maintains its upward momentum some of the energy stocks exxon mobile energy stocks have been going up i i've talked about con edison before ed here's the con edison this is the, a utility company. Utility companies going up. So there are some select stocks that are going up. Look at that dividend aristocrats list I, I've given before. You can you can look at build your watch list there. Let's take a look at some other stocks. We've got the healthcare stocks, Johnson and Johnson, healthcare stocks looking pretty decent. Merck. We're all gonna need healthcare. We're all gonna have to see doctors and get medicine throughout our lives. So healthcare. Pharma companies are doing okay. This is Merck. Uh, Pfizer, talked about Pfizer many times. You know, Pfizer could be making a base here. Um, Glaxo, Glaxo, Smith Klein. You know, all these healthcare stocks are going up. We look at the XLV, is the healthcare ETF. Now we have a position in that. You'd be surprised that, you know, you think the healthcare stocks are going up. The XLV should be going up as well, but it's sort of been flatlining here. Um, we're in a, we put sell credit position, selling put option credit spreads, hoping for the bounce here. Um, but we always play with cushion. So XLV, if you want to get a smattering of, of healthcare stocks, uh, let's see what else we got. Let's check out the list, get our list here. Let's see what we have. A uh, oh, Walmart. We always like to look at Walmart. Another stalwart. Uh, I've been in this range. Went up nicely. It's got a pullback here. I'm um, getting close to the 50-day moving. Uh, this is the actually the 200-day moving average right here. This is the 50-day. 50 50-day 50 here. 200-day here. 20-day here. So Walmart coming on a pullback. Pullback about $12 per share from its highs. So, you know, if you want a stalwart, Walmart, um, we look at Disney as well. We're looking at these these big stalwart companies, these well-known brands. Disney just been getting hammered. I've been buying around the 130 level. I'm underwater on the position, but I'm I'm having and holding for a long time. Disney's a great company. And this is just, the, for me, I believe it's just a temporary sell-off. And eventually the market's going to, the, the stock and the markets will go back up. So, you know, and I've also been nibbling a, a little bit more on the way down because I'm going to hold for a while. Um, Disney's a great company. I just don't, it's hard to see how it's coming off so much. Been selling some way deep out of the money puts as well. That's what we do here at smartopsandseller.com. Um, let me just quickly pull up our website. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more about put option selling, that's our, that's our specialty bread and butter. Go to our website, smartoptionseller.com. Click on the Put Selling Basics link right here, and it's a free report, free guide, free ebook. Put your name and email address in here, and we'll send you a free copy. All right, so let's go back to the charts. Disney, you know, getting getting close to oversold levels on the RSI. Um, I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a little bit of a buyer here, still on the way down. Gonna have and hold forever. 
that's just me with Disney. Uh, great company. Let's go back to the, the long term monthly chart. Um, here's the COVID low right around $80 a share. I mean, it's just gone up and come back down. I think there's value here in this area. That's just me, not a recommendation. This, I'm just showing you what I'm doing. Same thing with Nike, another brand on the same level as Disney. Nike just getting hammered as well. You know, some may see this as buying opportunities. Let's look at the monthly. You know, look how great Nike's been doing. And it's just been having, having this pullback, pulling back to the 50 week moving average right here. Is it a buy area? Possible. If you like Nike for the long run, you know it's a great company. Sell millions and millions of sneakers and apparel every year. I mean, some companies just have to be bought. You know, it's hard to buy on the way down because you think it could keep going lower. But, you know, some, I'm personally, I nibble, nibble along the bottoms, try to try to catch for a turn. No, not putting it all out there, just bits and pieces to hold for a long period of time. Uh, let's see what other stocks are on the list that we can look at here. Um, Netflix. Netflix hanging, hanging around their lows. Here's a look at the oversold here on the RSI, oversold here. Let's look at the volume, see if we got some spikes. Look at that, that spike right there. But that was on the, the air pocket on the, the earnings announcement. And, but, but the price action kept going lower. But you've got the divergence of the RSI right here. When price action keeps going lower, but the RSI starting to trend upwards, that means the selling is slowing down. And we may have the turn, the turn upwards. Let's remove the volume so we can see this a little better. So we've got the, the little bit of a turn upwards here the last two days, just like the rest of the market, RSI going up as well. Has Netflix found the bottom? Hard to say. It could rally up a little and then get hit back down again. Don't know. Facebook. Sort of the same thing. Earnings announcements just knocked it back down. Earnings announcements here brought it up, but it's been sold off again. I don't really like to play much with Facebook. Twitter, uh, Elon Musk said yesterday that the, the deal is on hold while they work out some more kinks. Still doesn't mean the, the deal is going to go through. So obviously stocks come down. Twitter has been coming down. The buy price is $54.20. We're at $40.72 now. He, he may be making a play to try to, to renegotiate a different price, a lower price, lower than $54. Um, we'll see. Does he have a legitimate gripe about too many spam accounts on Twitter that they didn't tell him about? That's what he's saying. Uh, price has been coming down, so we'll see what Twitter's doing. We, we don't have any positions in Twitter. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, Verizon, still hanging in lows. Kellogg, Kellogg doing pretty well. Cereal, making a lot of cereal. People still at home eating lots of cereal. Kellogg's, uh, PayPal, let's take a look at PayPal. We sold put options on PayPal with about a 50% downside cushion. Hoping to see PayPal get a bottom here. Um, still coming down a little. RSI slightly moving upwards. May have found a bottom here. Uh, I just can't believe a stock like this is still just coming off so much. The pay payment sector, PayPal, Square is the other big player, still getting hit as well. I mean, eventually these stocks are going to find a bottom. We just have to wait it out. We've got lots of these news headlines still out there. We're all in the same boat. You know, if you're long, you're a buyer, you're bullish, you have 401ks, a, a retirement accounts, long stock, we all have to endure these sell-offs at times. But we know as we look back at the SPY. Let's look at the um, long-term chart. We know the market goes up over time, but we have to endure some pullbacks along the way. If you've got the, the time and the patience, then you will be rewarded in the long run. That's just how investing in the stock market works. Now, if you're very, if you're a shorter term player, it's harder. You know, you got to try to catch the swings up and down. In our newsletter, our time frame is about a couple months. You know, th those are our hold periods. So we have to be pretty good with our timing 
to try to catch these bottoms. So we've been very light. We've been hanging off on the sidelines, not putting our money at risk because we know the market's just been coming down. It's a little bit too treacherous for us to really put out a lot of new positions because if the market keeps coming off, then we may get stopped out of more trades and lose money. We don't want to do that. So we're kind of hanging back a little bit, more money in cash. Cash is a position to have, even though you're not really earning a lot of money on your cash, at least you're not losing it. So we, we're, we're taking it light. That's just how it is. The market telling us to stay out, we stay out. Okay. Um, let me see if there's any other stocks that are worth looking at. McDonald's is kind of hanging around. Uh, uh, Warren Buffett, uh, you know, even, even Warren Buffett's uh, stock's been coming off, but hanging on this now the 200 day moving average support area. Um, I sh I've, I've showed you on our website, we have the, the Warren Buffett report that I wrote about a trading strategy. You can go on our website and take a look. Let me see if I can show you where it is here on our website. If you go to the more tab and you click on shop right here, go to the more tab, click on shop and you'll, you'll come to the Warren Buffett trading strategy report that I wrote. It may interest you. So Warren Buffett, you want to piggyback him, take a look at that report. What else we have? Um, Bitcoin's been coming down this week, gotten under $30,000. So Mara and Riot, the Bitcoin stocks have also been moving lower. Bitcoin seems to be tracking with the stock market as well. Those are all going down. eBay, um, that's about it. That's about it, I think, of notable stocks. Just scrolling through the list here. Costco has gotten hit this week as well fell below the 200 day moving average you know there's a, like i said there's a point where value comes into play people are going to step up and start buying these stocks all right i think that's it for the notables uh oracle position we still have oracle we sold put options on oracle I'm waiting for that thing to come back for the bounce uh, 70 dollars seems to be support right now so we're waiting we're waiting all right I think that'll about do it for me here, 32 minutes in. Um, I hope this gives you a decent idea what's been happening. Let's quickly take a last look at the SPY. Relief bounce on Thursday and Friday. Uh, we may have some follow through Monday, Tuesday this week. Look for the downtrending channel and the downtrending 20 day moving average to catch the next potential resistance area. Will it knock it back down or will it muster enough muscle to break through and start the next leg of the upside in earnest yet to be seen but watch this area on the on the spy maybe around 415 dollar level see what happens all right that's all for that um, remember go to our website get that put selling basics guide and i uh, hope this video has been helpful give me a thumbs up in the youtube video don't forget to subscribe hit that red subscribe button leave me a comment Send me an email. I'll answer your emails. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter as well. In the, in the video description, you can see my Twitter link. All right, that's all for me today. I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead. I don't think I'll be around the next two weekends. Got some family obligations, graduations. Then it's Memorial Day weekend here in the U.S. So I'll probably see you back here in a couple weekends. All right, that's all for me today. Take care, everyone. This is Lee Lowell signing off.